Hey guys, it's Rishi once again, and we're back with our second verbal reasoning video where we will be focusing on anagrams. So what are anagrams, I hear you ask? Well, an anagram is a word which has had its letters mixed up. And they are words formed by rearranging the letters in another word. So all the letters in the given word must be used in the new one. So in this video, it is up to you to unscramble the letters and find the correct word. Now, it's not just about unscrambling the letters though. Sometimes you can make two or more words from a set of letters. And if that happens, then you must decide which word fits best in the given sentence. If that's still not clear, don't worry. We're going to be giving you an example question and answer at the start, which explains exactly what you need to do. Read that first and then follow through with the remaining part of the video. Anagrams are not that difficult once you've had some practice, and this will definitely give you plenty of that. So good luck, and let's dive into it. So how are anagrams used in the exam? So let's take a look at an example here. The sentence below has a word in which the letters are jumbled up. Rearrange the letters in capitals and write the correct version below it. So usually there is more than one way that anagrams are used in the exam. So usually they take this form where candidates are given a sentence which contain one word which has been jumbled up and then we need to rearrange them. So the sentence below has a word in which the letters are jumbled up. So let's rearrange the letters in bold and write the correct version below it. Now, there is no clear way of solving this. I'm only going to give you the sensible advice to guide you. So firstly, look at the context. So in a simple question like this, the first thing you think of that someone would sit on is a chair. So obviously, this would be the answer. But thinking about the sort of thing which would be in the place of the jumbled letters gives you a real advantage. Imagine doing a crossword where the clue was just A-R-C-I-H, which is your anagram. It would take longer than the question above as we would have no context and would only have the letters to use to help us. So the key here is no context. Now, if the answer doesn't come straight away, look for common letter strings. For example, common endings such as ed, ion, ate, etc. So similarly, common beginnings are useful to look for as well. And there's hundreds of these and they can be picked out easily enough. So again, if we scroll down, the answer is the girl sat on a chair. So just to reiterate, look at the common endings as well as the common beginnings. And the other thing to think about is the fact that we have a at the beginning. So we know because it starts with an A, the answer must start with R, C or H because A and I are vowels. So we would know that she would have to sat on an object if it was to begin with a vowel. So I hope that was clear. Let's now go ahead and dive into the first set of questions here. The chair is an anagram of a-R-C-I-H. Okay, let's begin with question number one. So something grows in damp habitats. So again, if we unscramble this word, so as you rearrange the letters in capitals, the word that comes to mind is either edges or sedge. And now edges would not work in this case. So the answer is sedge, which is a grass-like plant which grows in wet ground. So the answer here is sedge. Marvellous. Question two. He poured custard onto his something pie. So again, the context here is food. So we're talking about a pie, but what type of pie? And again, if you rearrange the words, we would get apple. And there we are. Okay, question three. She something gracefully over the ice. So again, this is an action word. She did something gracefully over the ice. So again, we have the word glided. 
and there we are. Okay, question four, the something sang in the trees. So again, if you take a look at the context, what would, be what would you typically find in trees uh, that would sing? So again, we can go with birds, and that is our answer. And then finally, there is a problem with something cats in our neighborhood. Hmm. So again, the context is around cats, and they're in the neighborhood. So it doesn't look like they are domesticated. So the word here would be feral. And the word feral means wild. So again, this is a great way for you to not only unscramble words, but also learn your new vocabulary. So I hope that example was clear. Let's now go over to the second and the final set of questions here. Don't forget to pause the video at any given time, attempt the questions, and then press play to see the solutions. Okay, so the buses are kept overnight at the, at the something. So the first thing to understand is, what would be the name of something where buses are kept? So the answer must be depot, which is a place for storage. And for number seven, the something bobbed up and down on the lake. So we could make the word sork or crocs, but they are not real words. So the answer could either be rocks or corks, but again, rocks don't float. So the answer must be corks. And there we are. I hope you're finding this useful. Let's go ahead and jump into question eight. So the balloon, something as the air escaped from it. So let's think about it now. Something's happened to the balloon as the air has escaped. So I can see instantly we can make the word dishes, but I don't think that relates to the context. But in fact, we can also make the word hissed. The balloon hissed as the air escaped from it. And there we are. Okay, moving to question nine. I've had a something headache since I woke up this morning. So instantly, you can go with the word slight. I've had a slight headache since I woke up this morning. It relates to the context and it's the correct spelling. Before finally going over to question 10, where we have the road something as it made its way up the mountain. So it's almost like giving the road human-like features. So the road snaked, we could say, as it made its way up the mountain. The road snaked as it made its way up the mountain. And there we are. That there is a quick introduction to your anagrams. A quick tip to the parents as well. As with so many other aspects of verbal reasoning, it's much better for your child to create their own puzzles than just to answer these questions. So ask your son or daughter to make some anagrams for you to solve, and they will get used to manipulating letters and noticing letter strings. And this is particularly important for students who find this topic unnerving. So the more approaches you have to learning spelling patterns, the better it is. Don't forget to go with the context of the question. And with that in mind, that brings us to the end of our video. I hope you found this introduction useful. Don't forget to contact us for more relevant topics that we can go through in the future to come. Keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next video.